I think you can see the screen and I'm also on unmute. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks a lot to Nikita and uh, Professor Helmchen for inviting me to give a presentation today. Um, my name is Johannes. I'm a PhD student. Actually, I'm in the process of defending my PhD uh, with uh, Björn Menzer. And a lot of the work that I will be talking about today is in collaboration with the Helmholtz Centrum in Munich with Ali Ertürk, um, who was so nice, who is a Mesospim user and has provided us machine learning engineers with so much nice data over the years. Um, I will talk about machine learning for vascular structures today um, because this was my main topic, but in our AI team, we have also solved a lot of the similar problems that I will be discussing today. A lot of the methods that we have developed for vascular structures, we also develop for all kinds of different biological structures. Think about cancer cells, cancer metastasis, other cells. Think about DNA origami, even liquid nanoparticles, as we've seen in, in the, the, the modern COVID vaccines and so on. All of these have been imaged in the Etrix lab and um, yeah, part of our group is, is busy developing machine learning methods for all of these. Um, I wanna start by giving a little bit of an insight into the three different representation domains that we can take as inputs to our different machine learning approaches. On the one hand, we have the images. Um, very prominent deep learning has been applied to segment images or also binary pixel-wise classification has been used a lot in research. Um, is medical imaging, biological imaging is basically the first step of compressing, of getting a more expressive representation in a binary pixel representation, which is still an image base. The next step or the next logical step to, to generate a more compact uh, expressive representation is the step to extract graphs. To this day, a lot of the graph extraction work that has been done is really done based on such segmentations and really heuristics, really old school computer vision algorithms, but machine learning is also tackling that. But on these graph representations, a lot of very fancy and interesting new machine learning methods also called geometric deep learning are being applied these days. It is very interesting, and I will talk about it later in detail, how such advanced machine learning models are able to harness these expressive representations to also solve biological questions. Um, as a first discussion here, I wanna talk about segmentation, deep learning for segmentation using convolutional neural networks, how to get from an image, for example, the nice mesospin images, which are probably the best images out there in the biology field nowadays, to get a full brain representation of the vasculature. Our first work here, um, together with other works, DeepMag for cancer metastasis and Chanel, which also Sean presented this, this morning, also had a deep learning part, uh, was VESAP. And in the VESAP project, we went from a, from a, um, this was supposed to be a video, really sorry. We went from, from an image representation, a whole brain imaging of the vascular structure to a segmentation of this vascular structure. This was interesting in 2019, 2020 to apply deep learning to this task. And for us, it was really a necessity because back in the day, we really didn't have the computational resources to apply other methods. Let's talk about traditional filters, for example, the Frangi filter, um, other heuristical methods, grid search, all of these kind of methods were really not available to us at this computational scale at this point in time. So what we did is develop a deep learning model, CNN, fully convolutional neural network, which had, was a lightweight architecture and was at that time, the state of the art to segment vessels here. Um, quick, quick look at the pipeline, of course, in this project, the clearing, clearing and imaging was also a contribution. I'm not going to talk about that because, well, probably everyone in this call knows more about imaging and clearing than I do. And um, based on this new staining protocol that Mike developed here, we applied this network. It's a fully convolutional neural network, very simple, full convolutions, five layers of full convolutions, which is a very lightweight architecture was used 
to generate a binary pixel-wise register, pixel-wise representation of our vasculature. This representation was then in the next step used to register our images to the Elm brain space and to extract features. For example, radius features, which were of course co-located with the Elm, Elm brain atlas anatomy. Um, radius features, vessel length features, bifurcation point features or branching points as you also call them. And these representations were basically the key for, 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 for a few biological findings which were based um, on the segmentation. On the one hand, when we looked at the segmentations, we could track vessels and were able to identify collateralization in some mice brain which were um, not that reported in the literature. For example, in the CD1 strain, I think it is a well-known fact about the black six mice and for the bulb C mice that you do not see many collateralizations, but our segmentation with some tracking enabled us to detect these collaterals and quantify them. And on the other side, also the extracted features registered to the Allen Brain Atlas enabled us to really characterize vascular structures in different brain regions and put this into context, really have a description of how different brain regions have different vascularization, how oxygen, this is a proxy, how oxygen is distributed, of course, and enabled us to really comprehensively describe this for, for, for the first time there. Um, sorry for running so, so fast through the VESA project, but what is really, what I'm really excited about and what was really mainly my work is the machine learning part of it. And I'm very excited about the fact that machine learning and biological research are really going hand in hand here. We had many scenarios where we, are, where we were faced with a problem, for example, in, in the VESA project, and basically had to develop new machine learning ideas how to solve these problems or apply existing methods from the literature, which are very, you know, MNIST data sets, very, very theoretical, very mathematical to this kind of data. One such example is the transfer learning. So, also an approach we applied in the VESA project, but we're also able to publish in the machine learning conference, the short abstract, the transfer learning concept. And the transfer learning concept is a concept where you pre-train a model on a synthetic data set, or could also be a real different data set, but you basically pre-train your convolutional neural network, and then only refine it on a very small set of labeled data of your real data. Just an example from our VESA project, um, we had the problem, okay, we have this huge vessel images, I don't know, 10,000 by 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. How can we get generate label data? Do we want to sit down a person for a whole year maybe to, lay, to, to get pixel-wise labels? Not feasible, way too expensive, way too much time. So what we did is we generated a synthetic data set of vessels and then labeled a very, very small set, 0.02% of one single brain only and refined our deep learning model on this small set and were able to successfully segment the whole brains that are in this data set. Um, another advantage, of course, is the generalization to other modalities. Basically, our synthetic pretend model for vessels can be used by other researchers who have a specific vascular data set, could be very small histolo histology samples, can be whole brain imaging again and refined on their method. So really enabling the generalization of, 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 of a method in a way. Another project, which was also inspired by a problem we faced in, in, in VESAP, and also then led to a good contribution in the machine learning community, CVPR is basically one of the most important venues in our field, was that when we inspected our vessel segments, the performance of different models, we were able to often see some kind of trade-off. So what you can see here on the left side is a very small vessel patch. It's extracted from somewhere from this whole 3D, uh, 3D brain. And we have two candidate segmentations. We have a purple segmentation and we have a red segmentation or pink segmentation. When we evaluate these two candidate segmentations numerically, mathematically, like we, do, like we would with performance scores, we would say, let's say 95% uh, of pixels are classified accurately. There's other different, more complex mathematical formulations to do this. But these two candidate segmentations would provide us 
with an identical performance score. But to us, it was clear that this in red is a superior segmentation because what we were mainly interested in is the whole vascular network. We were not interested in running a navy stokes modeling of, of, of blood flow in this one vessel because probably the resolution and the imaging quality would not be good enough anyways. But what we were really interested in is being able to segment all of the vessels, being able to generate a full network. So this was a major obstacle or major problem we saw when training a lot of, lot of, lot of networks for our vascular data. And what we did is then we went to we went to uh, to friends in the math mathematics department and the machine learning department and used concepts from digital topology, it's a very abstract field in mathematics, to design a new object objective loss function which improves this connectedness. So which improves and changes the objective from going to a purely pixel-wise optimization to a network-like optimization. And we're able to provide theoretical guarantees and basically optimize these network-like structures. Just as a high-level description, this centerline dice, uh, dice work, what it does is basically it matches not only predictions with an actual label, what it does, it, it, it matches a volumetric prediction to a skeletonized version of a prediction. So mathematically, what it does, it, it enforces, it puts more importance to pixels which describes the full connectivity of your vascular network and, and not an equal importance to all these kind of pixels. Exactly, so yeah, this is something that I was really excited about and was really the topic of, of my PhD was how can we, how do we see problems in biology or problems in imaging and how can we use machine learning to improve them, but hand in hand at the same time also improve machine learning research, yeah. Um, okay, considering that we would now have, a, let's say, somewhat perfect or good segmentation, I want to briefly move to the third domain, which are graphs, um, which again, as I said in the beginning, is an even more expressive, more compact representation of the biological information that we have in an image. Fortunately, in our case, vessels, the interpretation of vessels as a graph is super trivial and straightforward. Just think about nodes, are your bifurcation points or branching points and all the vessels connecting the different branching points as edges. So it's a very interesting use case because you can obviously create all kinds of different graph representations. Um, but in this case, your graph representation is really mimicking the physical behavior. This is why this is a very special case but also a very straightforward case from an interpretation perspective. And what we then did in our latest work, this is in, in, in NIPS publication, is we do this step, right? We use the Vareen framework to extract these whole brain vessel graph structures, then put it into standard machine learning pipelines. So Python geometric open OGB data, data formats are very frequently concepts or very frequently used formats for the machine learning community and applied benchmarked a set of graph learning algorithms on these kind of data sets. Why is that interesting? Um, I will skip this slide. It is just a quick slide describing the data set and that what this graph representation does. Because I mean, it's, it's very straightforward. We talk about the nodes, we have the connecting edges and in your nodes and your edges, you can incorporate all the knowledge that you already have. For example, a radius can be attached as a feature. The length of a vessel can be attached as a feature. Your neighbors can be detect, attached as node degree. So you basically represent one whole vessel as one data point, as one entry in your matrix with a small feature vector to it. And why is that interesting? Because this set of, there's a, a set of graph learning problems. One of them is, for example, link prediction predicting missing links between existing nodes and edges in your network has a straightforward application again for our use case. Predicting a missing link in a graph representation of a vascular network is basically predicting a missing vessel. This has multiple applications for us because in this image, you can see again, this is a segmentation. You can see 
there's clearly a few disconnections, right? These should not be there in an ideal vessel network. So clearly our imaging and our segmentation is not perfect. So improving segmentation using link prediction would be one use case, but also there's a lot of pathologies, for example, a microvascular ischemic disease, where a vessel is not fully there, is not fully closed where it should be the case. This could also be growing vessels. So this class of machine learning problems, link prediction, again, has a direct application to biology. Similarly, it is the case for node classification. We also benchmarked a large set of graph classification algorithms on node classification, where we looked at all of our vessels as such and classify them into three classes, arteries, veins, arterioles, venules, and capillaries. So you have a very compact representation and a very compact and easy way to quantify where do we have our large vessels, where do we have our small vessels, and have again the application, node classification is a big task, a big, big, big graph learning task, has a biological meaning here. I did not want to, want to bore you with a lot of numbers today, that's why I left all of them, out, most of them out here, but just to just a little bit of a proof that these graph learning algorithms work. We benchmarked a large set of them, for example, here on, on the link prediction task. These are all different methods and found very poor performance for a lot of them, but indeed were able to identify a few existing and very powerful large neural network methods which were able to, quant to predict to correctly predict missing vessel links at a 90% 90, 90 accuracy. So this task is solvable using graph learning, but again, there's also a lot of room for improvement again. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, try to solve machine learning problems inspired by biology or the other way around in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Time for questions. Yeah, Peter has written a question in the chat. Uh, if I understand correctly, your C CL dice loss function correctly is designed to by yourself and your colleagues. Would, do you think it would be possible to automatically learn a well suited loss function based on your existing ground truth data set? I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the, 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 the question correctly, Peter. Pete, maybe, Peter, um, can you unmute yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, a loss function is the objective function which trains your neural network. So if you, if you want to learn the parameters in your neural network, you have to predefine kind of the loss function base. So it, it's a mathematical objective function, how the weights are learned in your neural network. But maybe I just misunderstand the question as well. No, no, it's all right. I, I, I just thought that maybe you have some additional metric which defines how well in the end you can learn it, like the final loss after learning. And based on this, define the best loss function. Mm -hmm. So I assume that by loss after learning, you mean some performance metric? that you would use after learning to quantify your performance. Exactly. And I mean, this is a very interesting point because this is what centerline dice loss, dice loss does or what we used it for. Initially, we had this idea to come up with this metric where we match a skeleton inside a volume. Let's say the skeleton from my predicted volume in my labeled volume and use this as a metric to see how good my, my segmentation performance is. And based on this idea only, we came up with a way how to formulate it as a loss function. So yeah, basically it goes hand in hand and was used in both ways, but unfortunately it was a bit more difficult to come up with this loss function formulation because you, needed to, you need such a representation to be fully differentiable to, to harness the power of deep learning. Okay, thank you. 